then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters decreased. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day of the month, on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass, at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Then he sent out a raven, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days. And again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening. And behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove, which did not return again to him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked. And indeed, the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God spoke to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth nor will I again destroy every living thing, as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease.
When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him. I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. <sighs> See that you tell no one, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. I will come and heal him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him. Lord, save us. We perish. Why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled. How can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Jergesenes, there met him two demon-possessed men, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly, they cried out, What have we to do with you? Jesus, you, you son, son of God, God, have you come, come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, If you cast us out, permit us to go, go away into the herd of swine. Go. 
So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. And suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down this deep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. These are the heads of their fathers' houses, and this is the genealogy of those who went up with me from Babylon in the reign of King Artaxerxes, of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom, of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel, of the sons of David, Hattush, of the sons of Shechaniah, of the sons of Perosh, Zechariah, and registered with him were 150 males, of the sons of Pehath Moab, Elihoenai, the son of Zerahiah, and with him 200 males, of the sons of Shechaniah, Ben-Jehaziel, and with him 300 males, of the sons of Aden, Ebed, the son of Jonathan, and with him 50 males, of the sons of Elam, Jeshiah, the son of Athaliah, and with him 70 males, of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michael, and with him 80 males, of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, and with him 218 males, of the sons of Shilomith, ben Josephiah, and with him 160 males, of the sons of Bebai, Zechariah, the son of Bebai, and with him 28 males, of the sons of Asgad, Johanan, the son of Hakatan, and with him 110 males, of the last sons of Adonikam, whose names are these, Eliphalet, Jehiel, and Shimea, and with them 60 males, also of the sons of Bigvei, Uthai, and Zabud, and with them 70 males. Now I gathered them by the river that flows to Ahava, and we camped there three days. And I looked among the people and the priests, and found none of the sons of Levi there. Then I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Shimea, Elnathan, Jerib, Elnathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Mosholom, leaders. Also for Joyarib and Elnathan, men of understanding. And I gave them a command for Iddo, the chief man at the place Kasephia. And I told them what they should say to Iddo and his brethren the Nethanim at the place Kasephia, that they should bring us servants for the house of our God. Then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding, of the sons of Malai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherebiah, with his sons and brothers, 18 men, and Hashabiah, and with him Jeshiah, of the sons of Mirerai, his brothers and their sons, 20 men, also of the Nethinim, whom David and the leaders had appointed for the service of the Levites, 220 Nethinim. All of them were designated by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Aheva, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road, because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. And I separated twelve of the leaders of the priests, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brethren with them, and weighed out to them the silver, the gold, and the articles, the offering for the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his princes and all Israel who were present had offered. I weighed into their hand 650 talents of silver, 
silver articles weighing 100 talents, 100 talents of gold, 20 gold basins worth a thousand drachmas, and two vessels of fine polished bronze, precious as gold. And I said to them, You are holy to the Lord. The articles are holy also. And the silver and the gold are a free will offering to the Lord God of your fathers. Watch and keep them until you weigh them before the leaders of the priests and the Levites and heads of the fathers' houses of Israel in Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. So the priests and the Levites received the silver and the gold and the articles by weight to bring them to Jerusalem to the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and from ambush along the road. So we came to Jerusalem and stayed there three days. Now on the fourth day, the silver and the gold and the articles were weighed in the house of our God by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah the priest, and with him was Eleazar, the son of Phinehas. With them were the Levites, Jazabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, the son of Binuai, with the number and weight of everything. All the weight was written down at that time. The children of those who had been carried away captive, who had come from the captivity, offered burnt offerings to the God of Israel. Twelve bulls for all Israel, ninety-six rams, seventy-seven lambs, and twelve male goats as a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering to the Lord, and they delivered the king's orders to the king's satraps and the governors in the region beyond the river. So they gave support to the people and the house of God. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest. This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, 
and they receive the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Pray to the Lord for me, that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Arise, and go toward the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Do you understand what you are reading? How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and, beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? If you believe with all your heart, you may. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water... The Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotas, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Caesarea.